only, White Socks Only, and it's by Evelyn Coleman, and the illustrations are by Tyrone Jeter. White Socks Only. Are you ready? Here we go. White Socks Only by Evelyn Coleman. Grandma, can I walk into town by myself? I asked one hot summer's day. I knew that she, what she was going to say. She was going to tell a story. Not just any story, but my favorite story. I watched her turn toward her spit can. <laughs> the snuff juice hit the bottom, sounding like a chime. She rocked one or two times. She closed her eyes and then she looked at me. You know you ain't big enough to walk into town. Not alone, girl. I sure don't know why you asking me that. You ain't big enough till you go and do something good there. I smiled and plopped down on the step. She was about to begin the story. Grandma laughed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was a little girl, like yourself, I sneaked into town once. Yep, all by myself. Wasn't planning to do no good. Had just been waiting for that scorching hot day. I had two eggs hid in my pockets. Not to eat, mind you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But to see what folks, if they had said, was true. I slipped on my finest Sunday dress and my shiny black patent leather shoes and my clean white socks. I pulled my plaits back with a bowl. Why, I thought I was looking pretty grown up. Lord, you should have seen me strutting. That dust flying behind me, I had to hold my arms steady on act account that I didn't want to break those eggs. Now that I think about it, I must have been a mighty funny sight. <laughs> I'd sneak up on that road singing, Jack back Sally, 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 walking up the alley, 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 with nobody but myself and child. Mm, mm, mm. It was hot. Oh, on that kind of day, firecrackers might light up I was feeling pretty fine until I spotted that old chicken man sitting on his porch with his mouth like a smile. I just looked down at the dirt. My mama had told me about how that chicken man still did things that he knowed all the way from Africa. Things that his grandmother done taught him. Mama also told me that he could heal the sick by laying hands on them and that one time he made a blind man see just by looking deep in his eyes. And folks said he turned people into chickens if he didn't feel that what they were doing was right. That's why he was called the chicken man. He's called the chicken man. I was kind of scared and I was kind of scared that he might think that I, I wasn't going to do right, so I started walking faster. I still held my arms out steady though, so I wouldn't break the eggs. Anyway, when I got to town, I didn't see many folks that I knew. I wandered around with my mouth gaped open, looking at that white man and the white man and the fancy hats. That's when I saw Mama's friend, Miss Nancy, turning the corner. Oh, I was going to show enough be in trouble if she saw me. I told Mama everything, and she would have told Mama everything. So I took off running toward the first big tree I saw, and I hid behind it. I stayed there a minute, panting, <sighs> until I saw Miss Nancy walk right out of sight. Then. But in my haste, I burst one of my eggs and it was slinking down my dress and my legs. Oh, no. 
I figured I better do what I came to do and get back home. I was standing in front of this old big building where there was a statue of a soldier sitting upon a horse. And I read what it said on the building, Cole County Courthouse, Mississippi. I carefully pulled my egg out of my pocket right there. I cracked it one time against the horse's leg. The egg's insides dropped to the hot cement. I knelt down with my face real close. I watched that egg like old men watch checkers before they make their next move. For a minute, I thought it wasn't gonna do nothing. Then, right around the edges, I saw it. One little bit was turning white. Next, the white creeped wider and the yellow began to bubble. By golly, I was frying an egg on the cement just like the folks said. I jumped up and started dancing and prancing and it was time to go home now. I done it. It was all over and it was true. It could get so hot that you could fry an egg on the sidewalk. <laughs> I started walking and wiping sweat from my face with that eggy part of my dress sticking to me every time I would take a step. And my mouth was dry as dirt and I was mighty thirsty. And that's when I spotted the water fountain. It had a little step stool for children that could climb up and drink. But on the fountain, the sign read, whites only. Well. I knew what that meant. So I sat down on the grass and took off my shiny black patent leather shoes. Now, the only thing I had with them was my clean white socks. I stepped up on that stool and with those white socks hugging my feet. <laughs> yes, indeed. I was slurping up that water mm -mm, mighty fast when this big white Big white man with black and white bandana around his neck grabbed me off the stool and he, and he pushed me to the ground. The white man pointed to the side and yelled at me, can't you read, girl? Well, I'm gonna whoop you. I'm gonna whoop you till you can't sit down. His big fingers fumbled and tugged at his belt. I began to cry. <laughs> and, and, and a, and a crowd of white people gathered round and, and they all stared at me. Seeing all the people made me real, real scared. And, and I cried loud, oh, mama, oh, help me. I can't understand what that white man is so mad about. I was wearing my white socks. An old black woman from my church stepped through the crowd. She wasn't any, wearing anything white, but she untied her shoes and took them off and stepped up to the fountain and bent way down and she took a drink. I knew that man was gonna yell at her and he did. I'm gonna have to whoop you too, ain't I? He shouted. But then, other black folks started coming over and removing their shoes and drinking from the fountain. And they had on clean looking green socks and yellow socks and red socks and blue socks. Of course, that big man with the bandana kept right on yelling. His face got red as fire. He was snorting through his nose like a bull does when he's gonna charge. Other white folks came up and started yelling at us too. By that time, the big man had whipped his belt out of his pants and he was hitting me and everybody else was close. None of the black people moved. They just covered their faces. I sat there sob sobbing, holding my arms over my head. <sighs> oh. All of a sudden, everything 
everybody got quiet and if they was going to pray in church, even the white people. So I peeped out through my arms. The black people and the white people were moving aside. The chicken man was coming through and he was slowly tapping his way toward me. When he got close, he stopped. He looked at me from the top of my head down to my beautiful white socks. And then he bent over and pulled off his black shoes, his face squeezing up. He had the cleanest white socks you've ever seen. He stepped up on the stool. He didn't have to bend over very far because he was so short. He drank a long time from the fountain. I held my breath. <gasps> so did everybody else. The chicken man lifted his head. He turned around smiling. And slowly stepped down off the stool. Without a word, he pointed a crooked finger at the white man. The white man's belt was down by his side now, clasped tightly in his fist. And he was as still as a statue. The old chicken man helped me up. He took me and he took out a white handkerchief and he wiped off my face. There, there, child. It's time for you to go home. You did all right. Yep. He handed me a chicken feather out of the brim of his hat and hobbled away. All the black people surrounded me. They were all crying and hugging me. And then they took me home. When they told mama what had happened, she just broke out laughing. <laughs> she said, well, I guess you can go to town by yourself now because you're old enough to do some good. Nobody ever again saw the big white man who had whipped on us. None of us dared ask about the big chicken flapping around the courthouse near the water fountain neither. Mm -mm. And from then on, the white's only sign was gone from that water fountain forever. And from then on, that white's only sign was gone from the water fountain forever. And that is the end of White Socks Only. Did you like that? Oh my God, I really, really liked that. Oh, oh my God, oh my God. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, oh, and say, oh, I really, really liked that story. It was so good. Oh, I got scared. Did you get scared? I got scared. Oh my God. I wonder what was about the chicken. I wonder was the chicken. Listen, I wonder about the chicken. Do you wonder about the chicken? I want you to write me a paragraph and write a summary about White Socks Only. Just one paragraph. And the paragraph needs to have a topic sentence, three details, and a closing sentence. Can you do that? One more time. You're going to write a paragraph and summarize the story with one, number one, a topic sentence, a topic sentence. You're going to write a paragraph with a topic sentence, three details, and a closing sentence to tell me why you liked it. Okay, I'm getting ready to go now. I loved being with you so 